Thank you for listening to the Bayina Institute podcast. Please join us on Facebook at facebook.com slash Bayina Institute, or you can join our email list at http bayina.com and share these recordings with your family and friends. A'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem. وَلَقَدْ أَنزَلْنَا إِلَيْكَ آيَاتٍ بَيِّنَاتٍ وَمَا يَكْفُرُ بِهَا إِلَّا الْفَاسِقُونَ أَوَ كُلَّمَا عَاهَدُوا عَهْدًا نَبَذَهُ فَرِيقٌ مِّنْهُمْ بَلْ أَكْثَرُهُمْ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ثم أما بعد This is ayah number 99 of Surah Al-Baqarah The previous discussion we had a couple of weeks back uh, was in regards to being selective and being critical of Jibreel alayhi salam and being picky about the fact that he is the one that Allah sent to deliver the message to the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam and so in conclusion of this conversation really, these are concluding remarks of this part of the discussion, Allah Azza wa is telling His Messenger that there's nothing, sh- there's nothing short in His message. You know when someone, you're trying to tell someone something and they don't accept what you have to say, a feeling crawls into your mind, maybe what I said was not convincing enough. Maybe what I had to give them wasn't good enough. So it's kind of like sales, you know, when somebody doesn't buy your product, maybe at, at, when you didn't make the sale, you start losing either confidence in your product or in yourself, that maybe you didn't do your enough of a job or maybe the product isn't very good, that they didn't bite into it, they didn't buy it. So after this list of criticisms, now the Messenger himself, sallallahu alayhi wa is being given a boost of confidence. And Allah begins with la, and lam in Arabic is, it's called harf at by grammarians, but also... Rhetorically speaking, it's the response to an oath. So it's like Allah is swearing and the oath is implied inside the text. وَلَقَدْ أَنزَلْنَا إِلَيْكَ آيَاتٍ بَيِّنَاتٍ It's like Allah is already swearing for sure. We have already sent down upon you, especially to you, إِلَيْكَ آيَاتٍ بَيِّنَاتٍ Clear, miraculous signs. This is something we had a long discussion about before in the tafsir of Surah Al-Bayyana in this masjid. Long time back. But when Allah Azza wa Jal used the word bayina, you know, لم يكن الذين كفروا من أهل الكتاب والمشركين والمنفكين حتى تأتيهم البينة. And ex- the explanation of that word, that what is that clear, undeni- undeniable kind of proof? It's a combination of two things. رسول من الله يتلو صحف مطهرة. Two things come together. The messenger who's from Allah that recites purified scripture. So there are two things that are mentioned there: the messenger and the message. And this is very important for us to understand the clear nature of the ayat. وَلَقَدْ أَنزَلْنَا إِلَيْكَ Once again, not just أَنزَلْنَا آيَاتٍ بَيِّنَاتٍ أَنزَلْنَا إِلَيْكَ آيَاتٍ بَيِّنَاتٍ We have sent to you miraculous signs. Now the you obviously refers to the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa Part of the clarity, the ayat themselves are miraculous. The, the Arabs did not have a response to them. The wisdom in them, the truth in them, the arguments in them, the beauty in them, all of it was unmatched. At the same time though, who is the one giving them these ayat? His character is unmatched, sallallahu alayhi wa These ayat, this message has credibility also not just because of what they are, but also who they're coming from. These two things come together for it to have actual credibility that can't be doubted. On the one hand, the word itself is something that's undeniable. On the other hand is the character of the messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa that's undeniable. So both of these things in that sense are the perfect combination. There's nothing missing. So the messenger shouldn't feel alayhi salatu wasalam that there's anything missing on this side of the, the aisle. If there's any problem, it's on the other side. The one that refuses to accept. And on this note, just on a, on, a, on a tangent, but really an important tangent. When we talk about the work of da'wah, we often talk about the clarity of the Qur'an. And how perfect it is, and how miraculous it is, and how amazing it is. But that's only half the picture. The, the clarity of the message and the perfection of the message is one half the picture. What gave that message its credibility above and beyond its own perfection is the one that was delivering that message had a character that had credibility. Had had a personality that had credibility. He was, a, he was really recognized as a symbol of justice and honesty and mercy in the society even before he uttered a word of Qur'an. He already established his credibility. Now think about that. How are we going to actually do the job of da'wah just by talking, making pamphlets about how awesome the Qur'an is? and not have any credibility of our own. 
we don't stand for justice. We don't, we're not the, the examples of taking care of the, the, the needy or standing up against all forms of injustice, whether they affect us or anybody else. We don't, cut, we don't, get, we don't go in an uproar when somebody else is oppressed. Oh, that's their problem. But if something comes and happens to us, we're ready to protest. That's not justice. That's, self-centered, that's a self-centered attitude. And that makes us no different than any other lobby group that is interested only in helping who? Their own selves, not the cause of justice. But this is something the Messenger ﷺ was far above. And even, I mean, my teacher when explaining this concept gave some very powerful examples like, you know the, the family of Yasir anhu was being tortured, killed. What did the Messenger tell them? Is there a protest? No torturing Muslims. We're, cause, we're, we're not terrorists. We're just asking for, you know, to believe in one, one God. And, you know, we're not here to hurt anyone. And he's not in, no protest. Actually, he tells them, be patient. He tells Yasser and his family to be patient. That their reward will be in paradise. But at the same time, when a mushrik comes to the messenger, Ali wasalam, and Abu Jahl has taken his money, and he comes to the messenger, and this is a mushrik coming to the messenger for help. At a time when the Muslims are being persecuted. And so he comes in for help and he says, Abu Jahl took my money. He grabs him by the hand, goes to Abu Jahl and tells him, better give him his money back. He starts fighting for the rights of who? For the mushrik. When the Quran came down with ayat about the baby girl being buried, it wasn't the baby girls of Muslims. These were baby girls that were born in non-Muslim families, in mushrik families. You could say that's their problem. But no, the Quran came with a call of justice Justice that was affecting Muslims or not affecting Muslims. Justice that happened, whether it dealt with us or not, we came, the Qur'an came with this universal call which also gave it credibility. So if we abandon these principles and expect that our, the message itself should be enough, websites and videos should be enough, published pamphlets and books and flyers should be enough, then we're deluding ourselves. Those things are critical, absolutely, I don't deny that. But they will be a, a hollow shell if we don't fill it with the character that is required, you know. This is why a hadith, like the, you know, the, the simple statements of the Sahaba, they become so deep when you think about them. When the messenger, when it, it was asked about the messenger from Aisha radiallahu I think everybody here knows the statement, kana khuluquhu al-Qur'an. That his, his ethical character, his character was the Qur'an. Meaning the Qur'an was not just a book, it was a person embodying those principles. So now Allah says, وَلَقَدْ أَنزَلْنَا إِلَيْكَ آيَاتٍ بَيِّنَاتٍ وَمَا يَكْفُرُ بِهَا إِلَّا الْفَاسِقُونَ and no one disbelieves in these miraculous signs, in this perfect message, except those who are inherently corrupt. Al-Fasiqoon. Once again, careful. Just because somebody, you, you were at some da'wah table and somebody came and didn't accept the message of Islam and walked away, you say, Ah, wa ma yakfuru biha illa al-Fasiqoon. No one disbelieves in it except the Fasiqoon. There goes another Fasiq. That's not how it works. When did Allah give the verdict that these people are fasiq? When they saw the perfect character combined with the perfect message with an exhausted effort of da'wah and still after all the, you know, all the case has been made. There's no reason to reject this message from any point of view. And then they reject, obviously the only thing left can be there's some corruption inside. These are the inherently corrupt. So before we start labeling others that they're corrupt, maybe our da'wah itself isn't as pure as it should be. That what we're doing isn't as pure as it should be. So it's not, you know, it's very easy to say, I did my job. My job was to convey the message, I did it. No, 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 it doesn't work like that. That's an escapist attitude. Tell that to Nuh alayhi salam, right? I told him already once. I'm done. It's the same crowd of people he has to go back to over and over again. So, وَمَا يَكْفُرُ بِهَا إِلَّا الْفَاسِقُونَ Now Allah mentions, what makes them so corrupt? These people who after receiving this perfect opportunity, you know, if there's a person, who, everybody's got problems, nobody's perfect. Everybody's got problems. But if, if, they were the, if they had the opportunity to hear a powerful message from a reliable source, even a bad person who does a lot of bad things, even they would kind of be inclined towards it. Even they would be. You could hear a powerful khutbah one time and there's a person sitting in the audience that does all kinds of haram. And they know it's haram and they still do it. But one day they hear a khutbah and they say, you know what, I need to stop. Even they say to themselves, even they feel something inside. There may be some ounce of goodness left. Now think about this. Allah is mentioning people here that have no ounce of goodness left. And then Allah explains a proof of how is it that these people are inherently corrupt. He says, 
every time they came forward and made a really strong promise, a covenant, an agreement, they came forward with their word. And you know, by the way, in Arab tradition, your word is everything. And also in, tradi in, in ancient tradition, by the way, even in American tradition, in American history, giving your word was the highest form of, you know, making a commitment, not signing a paper or sending an email or, you know, stamping a contract. It was giving your word. So every time they made these covenants, these agreements, and by the way, what's implied is agreements with Allah, agreements with the Messenger of Allah. A group from among them, through that covenant, that promised that agreement, they chucked it. Nabada. Nabada literally, you know what it means? When you throw something away and you fail to realize its importance. You, you know, it's something that you should realize, it's something that you need to pay attention to, it's important. But they didn't, they didn't realize it's something that you have to really look at carefully. They casually knew what it was and they threw it off. What is it that they threw off? The promise made with Allah, بَلْ أَكْثَرُهُمْ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ Rather, most of them, they don't believe to begin with. What to talk about corruption and justice, they have no ounce of faith inside them. You know, this verdict, لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ is not coming from you or me, it's coming from Allah, they have no iman. They don't believe, that's not a small thing. That's, you know, la yuslimun and la yu'minun are different. Right? They, they don't accept Islam, that's something else. They don't believe. That's a verdict Allah has passed on someone's heart because iman is a matter of the heart. So this is a really serious verdict passed by Allah because of their casual relationship with these promises made with Allah. And here again, a lesson for all of us, myself included. When we accept this kalima, when we say, ashadu an la ilaha illallah, wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu, this statement, sallallahu alayhi wa this statement is a promise. This statement really is a promise. When we say, إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدُ وَإِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِينَ In every salah, it's a promise. We're promising Allah every time. We're going to enslave ourselves to you. We're going to ask for your help. We're making a commitment every time. Now Allah is talking about people who make a promise and chuck it out like it's not important. Think about that. <laughs> and then He calls these people, these people have no iman. How can they do that? How can they say words of Allah and then throw it off casually, like it has no value, just empty words. You know, utter them, you know, like half the hadith says, right? Khafifatan ala lisan, light on the tongue. It's just, it's just say it on the tongue and move on. It's not, it's not something simple like that. It's, some, it's something that's supposed to transform one's character. It should remind them what they're really doing on this earth. So, بل, you know, بَلْ أَكْثَرْهُمْ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ And the last ayah for today, وَلَمَّا جَاءَهُمْ رَسُولٌ مِنْ عِنْدِ اللَّهِ now the final bit, the final proof of what makes them corrupt. And when a messenger came, especially from Allah to them, a special gift from Allah came to them. Not just the promises they had made, a messenger came to them from Allah. مُصَدِّقُ لِمَا مَعَهُمْ And the, the, the description, the sifa, the na'at of that messenger is confirming what was already with them. So this messenger didn't come with something entirely new and they saw it and they said, I don't know about this. We've never heard anything like this. He was actually confirming what they already have with them. Now here Allah didn't add the word kana. Lima kana ma'ahum. What used to be with them. You could say it used to be with them, they changed it, they no longer have it, so they don't know. We're not sure what he's talking about. Allah says, lima ma'ahum. What is in fact with them right now? They have it in their book and they saw and they knew he's the messenger. We talked about that in detail before. So Allah says, when he sent a messenger confirming what they had, مُصَدِّقٌ لِمَا مَعَهُمْ نَبَذَ فَرِيقٌ مِّنَ الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْكِتَابِ A group from among those who were given the book. A subtle note about language here. Allah mentions two kinds of phrases. آتَيْنَا الْكِتَابِ آتَيْنَاهُمُ الْكِتَابِ We gave them the book. And then he mentions الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْكِتَابِ The people who were given the book. So he makes it passive. And it's interesting that every time he mentions the active form, آتَيْنَا, something good is mentioned. And some, so Allah mentions Himself, we gave the book when something good is mentioned. And when they do something evil, Allah separates His name from them. He says, those who were given the book, doesn't mention Himself. He doesn't say, we gave them the book. He says, utul kitab. So the, a group from among them, they took kitab Allah. نَبَذَ فَرِيقٌ مِّنَ الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْكِتَابِ كِتَابَ اللَّهِ وَرَاءَ ظُهُورِهِمْ They took the book of Allah and they chucked it behind their backs. وَرَاءَ ظُهُورِهِمْ Behind their backs. You know how this image of throwing something behind your back is when it's trash. Like you're writing something, ah, came out no good. You crumple up the paper, throw it behind your back. You know, this idea of trashing things. Literally, they treated the word of Allah, the book of Allah like that. In other words, they, they read their book, they saw the sign, and they said, no, no more, no more fun reading. <laughs> As though they have no idea. Now Allah doesn't say, because they have no idea. <laughs> He says, 
as though they have no idea. You know what that implies? Pretending that they have no idea. As, you know, coming across that, I don't know what you're talking about. And by the way, you'll find this even today, when you're trying to talk to someone about, you know, something in deen, and they want to make you look like a fool, you know what's the easiest thing you could do? You could just say, I don't know what you're talking about. I, I have no idea what you're talking about. That makes no sense to me at all. Never heard of it. You, somebody could say the most amazing thing to you, and you could completely invalidate what you're saying, which is these few words. I have no idea. I don't no idea what you're talking about. No, I have no clue where you're coming from. Don't get it. You're making someone look seem like, oh, maybe I didn't put my sentence together properly. Maybe my ideas are incoherent. Making them doubt themselves. So they know exactly what the messenger is talking about, but are they going to let him have that satisfaction? No. They're going to come across as, what's he talking about? These mind games. These mind games even happen now in da'wah. <laughs> You'll speak to someone, and, and especially college students, they love getting into debates with like agnostics and atheists. and like That's like the fun thing to do nowadays, right? And these kids, let me tell you something, they love debate. They love it. They live off of it. They want nothing more than you to just talk to them and they say, what about this, what about that? Nah, I'm not that convinced. That's kind of weak. That's this. And they want you to squirm. You know, a lot of times these kids, especially these philosophy major type kids, they have no better, nothing to do in their life except video games and, you know, uh, uh, just debating philosophy. Besides that, they have no other life. They really don't. So when they come to you, it's not because they want to learn the truth and if you were to give them convincing proof that they would be able to turn, them, you know, turn to Allah. That's not, the, that's not the point. They just love playing mind games. Some people love playing sports. Some, some people like basketball. Others like golf. These guys like mind games. That's all they like. And so sometimes Muslims, we're, we're naive. We don't realize that. And we keep playing into these mind games. Some of you are employees at companies and your coworkers like playing these mind games with you. And they just ask you stuff, throw stuff at you, just to see what you're going to do, just to see your reaction, you know? And we play right into it like, a, you know, like puppets. And these people are smart enough, they know exactly how we're going to respond, and they do it exactly knowing what move we're going to make next, and what they're going to say next, and just, ah, gotcha again. You know? We have to become more savvy when it comes to dealing with these, this kind of ignorance. We have to become more, you know, a little more street smart at least, a little more. <laughs> than we are now. Not so naive, not so worked up, not so easily caught in these kinds of discussions. May Allah Azza wa Jal open our eyes to what's going on around us. May Allah Azza wa Jal give us guidance and, and wisdom and lessons for, for all aspects of our life, including the work of making da'wah by means of his book and the sunnah of his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Barakallahu li wa lakum fil Qur'an al-Hakim wa nafa'ni wa iyyakum bil ayat wa dhikr al-Hakim. Wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.